What's up everybody, Rob Ferretti here and I'm gonna tell you about the big oops. And what do, you, what do I mean by the big oops? Next to me I've got a, and you've actually seen me do a video on this specific car, the 991 GT2 RS, which is the current lap record holder at the Nürburgring. It is an amazing piece of machinery and it is also very, very expensive if something goes wrong. And when I say that, I'm not talking about specifically the engine or the turbos or the carbon or any specific feature, but part of what makes this car awesome, because this is Porsche's like no stop, pulling out all the stops, and we're gonna build the, the wildest variant of the 991 platform we can to really establish Let's just say global do dominance, but it, it essentially to set the Nurburgring lap record, which it did in an impressive fashion, uh, below six minutes and 50 seconds, which is incredibly um, quick, considering all the other cars that it's, it's essentially kicked their butt. And then to drive it and to see how it's still Porsche and docile, and it's not like the McLaren Senna, which is probably like a, essentially driving my Corvette, uh, on the street, this is still a normal car and it handles everything very well from super capable performance car to also a uh, fairly docile street car when you want it to be. Now, today we're gonna focus on these wheels uh, because uh, if you look at them, they're all new. Well, why, why are there new wheels on the car? Well, there was a tire shop that made a very, very expensive mistake. Uh, when he put a, the owner put a second set of tires on this car, the shop made the mistake of not doing the torque correctly on the single lugs. And when you don't do that, you run into very, very significant problems. Here, uh, the owner just happened to be driving the car when one of the wheels essentially fell off. But this is one of the $8,000 rotors that had to be replaced. They're 8,000 a piece. And you can see how chewed up this is. And that's because the wheel was essentially spinning freely over it. So now you have a, a rotor that's shot. And uh, that wheel specifically, none of them were torqued down. If anything, I think it was torqued down to 45 pounds. I didn't check it. Um, but 45 pounds, when you have these single lugs, it's more so along the lines of like 500 foot pounds of torque. And that's why you saw I did the video on that big breaker bar that Shavam has for his car, is that you need 500 foot pounds to torque this. I don't get the single lugs. I get it for racing because it's a quick, the, the, the reasoning behind it, other than looking cool, is imagine you watch a, a pit stop and they got to go and take out all of these lugs going around the wheel. That takes much longer than one lug out, throw the wheel on and zap it back in and he's gone. So this is racing inspired. And then obviously they bleed it over to the street car because people thought it was cool. But it's not the most practical thing for a street car. And if you don't tighten that properly, you run into a situation like this. Now, this specific wheel of the four wheels, there's something that's very important. And I'm gonna get my hands all dirty here because I love doing that. If you're looking here, this is your single lug. This is the, what was on there. I mean, it's still on there now, but this, piece right here is quite important as well because if you look at the splines inside this this slides in and locks into the to the hub to spin without this the wheel yes it is attached but it's now spinning independently of the rotor in the hub it, it or it can spin independently most of the time, just the fact that it's touching and it's moving will keep it to go forward, but it will skip a beat, if that makes sense. Imagine, imagine a, um, uh, a cog system without the cogs on it. Like, yes, it'll, it'll propel forward, but now there's nothing holding it in place. So one of these was missing, and that's when the one wheel fell off. Luckily, uh, nobody got hurt in this situation, which is the most important part. But the one wheel fell off, and the wheel that essentially fell off was missing this, and this is key. The other wheels were all loose, so uh, you had to then tow, once the wheel fell off, next thing you know, you bring it to the dealership. The dealership came back with 
almost a $100,000 estimate to repair because the fact that these were all loose, they, they are unsure as to the condition of all the wheels now and then all the rotors. And those are very important. This is a super high performance car and it's not something you wanna screw around with when you're, you're essentially pushing the envelope of what cars are capable of doing, you don't want to run the risk of like, let's just assume everything's good. You replace everything that has to be replaced. And this is all because one guy with his, with his impact gun or whatever he did, did not put the correct torque down. And when I say the correct torque, he didn't put virtually any. I mean, 45 pound feet of torque, I would say is hand tight. Um, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know the, I mean, you guys can correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure I could do 45 pound feet of torque with, uh, with my hand. But that became very expensive. We have more garage art to add to the pile. We've got a set of rotors, set of calipers, not calipers, set of rotors, set of wheels. Um, and you know what, there, there is somebody that would say like, oh, that wheel's probably good enough for me. It's just when you can afford a car like this and, and even cars like that, do you really want to, take the risk on just saying like, yeah, it's probably still good. Uh, you want to get that taken care of. Now, uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't think the shop made good on it. Uh, that's what the owner told me. I'm not going to go blowing up the shop or call when I say blowing up the shop, calling them out. Um, but it was a wheel and tire shop that, that did this. And I believe there's litigation to try to settle it because the uh, tire shop either didn't have the appropriate insurance or just wasn't willing to pony up the difference between the insurance and uh, the owner, after getting his tires changed, it cost him now essentially $100,000 in addition to the tires to make his car right again. And this car is about to go on a truck today. We're going down to Charleston and we're gonna do the adventure drive strip from Charleston to Miami this coming weekend. And I'm happy to see this car on the road because maybe you know, we can trade cars. He could drive the 360 and I can get some more seat time in this because I love this car. But there you go. Uh, that is how one tire change ended up costing the owner of the car an extra hundred thousand dollars whether he recovers it or not who knows but that is the big oops rob ferretti giving you the cautionary tale of why i don't think center lock wheels are the best but ultimately uh they are in the market they will continue to be in the market and uh if you do them wrong it could be very both dangerous and costly thanks for watching see you tomorrow for those of you that aren't aware, I have another company called Adventure Drives. We do bucket list travel for car people. Our next trip is coming up in October, the 23rd to the 27th. The trip starts in Charleston, South Carolina, makes its way down to Savannah, Georgia, to St. Augustine, over to Daytona Beach, down to NASA, over to Orlando, and then all the way down to Miami. Pricing starts at just $2,450 for a half spot. Even if you don't have a car, we can pair you up with somebody who does. So we hope to see you out there. Check the link in the description for adventuredrives.com.